we're going live we're going live woo, woo, woo. yay did it work i think oh i think it did yes yeah. hey hi youtube welcome youtubers oh my gosh <laughs> i clicked go live on this end and we're yes. up so we're on dana good job nailed it good thank you job. it happened so we're here guys and anyway, we're super excited. You know, last year um, we uh, we did this uh, quite a bit, and um, but we weren't doing our regular videos, and we weren't doing all the other things that we're doing now with the shorts and everything. So um, we're now coming back to our live stream roots, and we're going to do a few more of these this year, but like once a month, maybe, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, around that. Yeah, I think so. so you guys out there on YouTube, this is a little bit more like a podcast this is the way that we sort of set it up and a lot of what we're doing is we're asking we're answering questions from our design space people who have joined the design space that's www.designspace.com little plug and um what they what they have because when you're a member you have access to our live zoom streams and so if you're over on our zoom side you're actually able to um see and and kind of interact with us and you'll see we'll be doing a lot of that today so megan what's in store for us today well okay the lineup today includes our q a with lisa and a bunch of you have already submitted your design dilemmas to the ask lisa the design <laughs> email but if you didn't get a chance to do that and have a question for her no worries you didn't necessarily miss out all you need to do is pop your questions into the q a section of zoom and we'll hit it during the lightning round at the end also in store for you is part three of our masterclass on how to mix design styles, plus design news where I'm going to tell you all about a special formula that practically guarantees design success. So if you guys are ready to dive in, I'd like to start out with a challenge for everybody out there. I'm going to just share my screen really quick. And I want you guys to tell me if you know what this is. Let me know in chat. YouTube, you're challenged too. I was going to say, and, I know what it is, so I'm not going to answer. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I'll answer. Um, we'll, we'll put it in the chat, guys. What do you guys think? Yeah, Let's guess in chat. chat. Oh, okay. And for, for you guys out there on YouTube, we're also monitoring a chat on Zoom, which is, um, there's a little bit of a delay, so they're getting a little bit of us up. That's uh, right. Yes, we got some right answers. We've got, we had some close, yeah, the golden mean, the golden ratio. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys nailed it. It's also known as um, the Fibonacci. It looks like, heard. Maggie, it looks kind of yeah. like a Nautilus shell. It, it really does. And actually, the Nautilus shell is a perfect example of, of the golden ratio, uh, literally mathematically perfect. Uh, let me show you. So what does that have anything to, to do with design? I mean, I don't mean to- It has that. actually everything to do with design. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the, golden, <laughs> the golden ratio is one of those design rules that is really helpful to use when creating a room scheme from scratch or rebalancing an existing one. So if you're just starting out in your design project or simply need help creating balanced spaces, it's one of those design formulas that is 100% worth referring to. And you'll see here, Found like in Dana nature everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely everywhere. Yeah, but like what is the golden ratio and how do you apply it to real spaces? It's not a new fad. In fact, the golden ratio has been used for over 2,500 years as a mathematical sequence, um, 1.618 1. to be exact. Now it occurs all over the natural world from seashells, like Dana mentioned, to plants, to galaxies, and it's thought to be perfectly pleasing to the eye. Now, the golden ratio is what top designers use to create their impeccable yet seemingly effortless design schemes. Now, of course, the idea of applying the precise 1.618 ratio to our real living spaces is pretty complicated. So you can swap that out for, <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? Uh, but you can swap that out for a ratio of like 60-40 or a 60-30-10 breakdown, and it becomes that much more useful for interior design. Um, in either uh, case, can I ask you a question, Maggie? Yeah, may yeah. I interrupt for a minute? Sure. Uh, yeah. So I know from a sense of graphics that we 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 look at an image from the top left, and we scan across down to the bottom right, and then we scan back up around. So if you were to do a flip on that, which would be the exact same thing, that is exactly the way the eye moves when it's when it looks at anything. Yeah. It interesting. Yeah, actually. 
I didn't know that. Um, I mean, I knew that with like, like reps in, but I never thought to apply it to the, the Fibonacci sequence. Um, well, I just saw but, it. I just, yeah, saw it. I, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's right. Um, <laughs> well, in either case, I mean, you will consider each element of your room using that ratio. So from the scale of your furniture, structural details, right down to the color scheme and textural components, um, because any balanced room scheme needs to have good proportional representation of colors, textures, and patterns. Um, let me show you what I mean. Um, let's start with color. Now, for example, in a, a two color room scheme, the dominant color will cover around 60% of the services, while the complementing secondary accent color will cover around 40%. Uh, you can, of course, break this down even further so that 60% is the dominant color, 30% is the secondary color, and then 10% the tertiary. Uh, color is a great way to get started with this theory. So you choose your three tones and split them into these ratios. So 60% of your space could be one color, perhaps through the paint on your walls or larger pieces of furniture. Um, choose another shade to be your 30% color and apply it through textiles such as curtains and rugs. Finally, your third color throughout accents and accessories using it across 10% of your space to create a balanced and well thought out look. You can also apply this to pattern. So let's say you want a space with three complementing patterns, but no, don't know how to get that balance right. Well, the principles above are the same. The pattern you want as your main choice will cover 60% of services, uh, whether it be like a sofa, 40% of the other service, think cushions, uh, that, that will be covered in your second pattern. Again, you can scale this up and break it down so that 60% represents a patterned wallpaper, 30%, let's say, uh, uh, sofa fabric, and two sets of 5% representing different pattern cushions. Um, knowing how to mix patterns in a room successfully can help you get this right, but um, we're gonna cover that actually in another design news. Yes, yeah. there's yeah, a lot a big of one. ways. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of ways to apply it within yes. the three-dimensional experiential space. So um, yeah, but this is a good, good start, I love it. Good, and another way to do it is so through our layouts, um, the Golden <laughs> Ratio provides a, a tangible framework to achieve a balance in a space, blending the scale of pieces for a visually pleasing aesthetic. Scale and proportion can be tricky to master, but with the Golden Ratio in the back of your mind, it can help you deconstruct layouts and plan furniture purchases with a greater sense of confidence. So like overall layouts, using the 60-40 formula, measure up your entire floor space in a room, then take measurements of the floor space that's covered by furniture. Now, if the furniture fills more than 60% of the floor area, the room is likely overfurnished. Now, if it's much lower than 60%, it's likely to feel on kind of like the unfriendly side of minimal. So ideally you wanna aim for a layout that leaves 40% or so of the floor clear. But if I was, if I was going to um, uh, choose one of those options, I'd choose a rug that's too small over no rug at all. I mean, is that what you would say, Lisa? Or would you say I would be wrong completely? Because I say that again, I'm sorry. What was the question? I'm saying, would you would you choose a too small rug over no rug at all? No, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> It's that big of a no-no, guys. <laughs> That's right. And in fact, if you are watching today's video today, if you haven't already seen, if you haven't already seen it, it just released at around 10. So it's all about kind of some questions about that. And one of those questions is that one. So yep. get my answer there too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up, we have furniture. Um uh, this balance of furnished and unfurnished space in interior design will also help you choose furniture that's the right size, um, allowing you to scale up or down a sofa or coffee table so that it's in proportion, not just to the room's floor area, but to other items of furniture too. Uh, for example, you'll want to look for a coffee table that's around two thirds of the sofa's length for a balanced feel. Any larger is gonna feel too big, any smaller is gonna feel more like a misplaced side table. Um, by the way, if you happen to be in a market for a sofa, I highly recommend you check out our ebook, um, how to buy the right size sofa and also how to buy a sofa online. Um, both of those are exclusive to design space. Um, but circling back to the coffee table, let's talk a little bit about coffee table styling, which is a great example of how to apply the golden ratio. Now, ideally, whatever you're displaying on the coffee table surface should take up no more than 40% of the space to look neat. Um, so in this living room, we can see that the decor takes up a little bit more than 40%. So I'd probably edit out like the 
small sculptural object in either one of the trays or maybe that stack of books. Um, and by the way, if you want a deep dive into how to style a coffee table especially well, uh, we have a fantastic ebook on the subject in our design space library. Yes. Yes. One of my favorites, actually. Yeah. Okay. And finally, we have art. Now, when it comes to wall art, there are a few creative routes you can take depending on your room layout. Now, applying the golden ratio, mentally divide the wall into thirds from top to bottom and left to right. So for large statement pieces, position the art so that the outer edges of the painting sit nicely within that hypothetical grid. Now, if you're hanging up, uh, let me show you this photo. No. Now, if you're hanging art above furniture, you want the individual piece or overall grouping of multiple pieces to be about two thirds the size of whatever is beneath it. So when hanging art side by side or creating a gallery wall, the center of the painting or the arrangement feels most comfortable when at eye level, which is about two thirds of the wall height measuring from uh, bottom to top. One of the most common designs, design mistakes that we see is uh, people hanging art too high. So on average, the center of the painting or arrangement should be around 56 to 60 inches from the floor. Um, the other mistake we often see is that art's too small in scale. So be sure to get those measurements dialed in before you make any purchases. So let me ask uh, you this question. What is it, Megan? What happens if you're like a tall family and everybody's like five? Then, <laughs> then you're on then you're on that more 60 inch range. There's there's a reason there's a range. Uh, but right. yeah. But if you're really tall, go ahead and hang it, you know, at your eye level. It's your space. You're the one looking at it. That's that's what's important there. But uh there you have it, guys. I mean, I hope this was helpful and inspired you. Um, it's important to note that the while the golden ratio is a valuable tool, it should not be a rigid constraint. Uh, successful interior design involves an interplay of various elements, um, and the golden ratio serves as a guiding principle rather than a strict rule. So as you incorporate the ratio into your designs, it's perfectly acceptable to allow room for creative interpretation and adaptability. So there you go. Megan, that was amazing. Oh, Yay, thank you. Maggie. Yay, I hope that, <laughs> oh, that was interesting, guys. I mean, you yeah. just pulled that right off the top of your head like that. I can't believe it. <laughs> I, I prepped a little bit. I prepped a little bit because I wanted to make sure I gave you all the claps. The Yay, yeah. thanks, guys. Look at that. Yes. Thank so you, guys. Are the claps I appreciate coming that. up from YouTube? Oh, yeah, I think so. Oh, nice. Okay. Awesome. Good, awesome, good, awesome. good. You know, you know, I think the thing is that the, a lot of people are, um, when they go to sort of think about their homes, it's kind of overwhelming to, they want to do the project. Everybody wants to kind of like do the work and that's good. I understand that. But there's a lot of details that overwhelm people and simple principles like Bonacci and golden rule and things like that tend to get overlooked really fast in Isn't all of the thing? other minutia that you're you're that you're doing is, mm -hmm. is, is that the same thing just so i'm not misunderstanding the golden rule and fibonacci am i yeah my no that's correct yep no that's correct uh it's called like it can be called the golden number the golden oh. mean yes um, the golden, that's mean. Right, golden ratio yes. yep yes mm -hmm. Well, yeah. if you look on um, chat, um, Sharon is saying that that needs to be turned into an ebook, and she's right. Oh, sure, Ooh. absolutely. Yes, consider yes. it done. I mean, those, of you guys, those of you guys on YouTube who've never turned tuned in before, we all created a, uh, a, a, a website. Also, it's, it's a mobile site as well called Design Space, and we have a library of about fifty it, it books exclusively written on interior design by Lisa and our team. And Megan, mm -hmm. and that are so all that's about the we're talking about. Yeah, and they're all about kind of helping uh, get some of those questions you may not even know you have yet answered. Because when you start doing a project, a lot of times you think you've got it covered or you've got it handled. And I understand why. There's a lot of resources out there that you can see, lots of inspo and things like that. But the real reality of applying that inspiration to your space has some odd junctions to it. And that's when you start to hit, you know, bumps and speed bumps in the road. And that's what design space was made for. It was made to be a place that you could go if you have a, you know, couple of questions about you know exactly what size drug you want or exactly 
you know, how to lay out your room or how to start your coffee table or, you know, how do I get the how do I get the feel of the golden mean in my my room or just, you know, how do I hang curtains? Anything as simple as that. It's all in there and it's all developed by this team, me, Megan, Dana, all of our, our team people. And so, you know, the information's good. Yes, <laughs> you know, right. it's legit. <laughs> that's right. Well, speaking of questions, I know we have quite a few yes. um, that our members yes. submitted and they are fantastic. Yes. I'm excited to answer some today. And it was yeah, from Megan, all over. Megan, before we yeah. launch into, into that, can you explain to everybody how that works for people who are on, on YouTube that might not know? How, oh, how to submit questions or how? Well, like, no, how we get those questions and why they're submitted, the little bit of the back, behind the scenes of what happened. Oh, oh, basically, if you're a member of Design Space, you get the opportunity to ask Lisa uh, really anything um, as it relates to design. And ideally, we like it when you submit photos as well. But that, that gives you an opportunity to get, like Lisa said, very legit design answers as it relates specifically to your space. And so we have our members submit their questions ahead of time. Um, Lisa will look through them, choose them, and we'll answer them live. Yeah, and in like some this. cases, we'll actually talk to you live too. I think we're going to do that today as well. Yeah, I we, think what we do. So. Is, we I love to bring people up here. so that there's a, a real give and take and a live back and forth. So it's mm -hmm. not just, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, you ready, Lisa? Oh, I sure am. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. I am going to start out with and i don't know if she's here today um and if you are evelyn um i want you to uh pop on and say hello if not, i mean you don't have to pop on but you can pop on verbally and say hello because evelyn has sent me a very interesting little uh dilemma with her fireplace and her question is Looks like she's got some very intentional um, information going on here, but it may be a little bit older. That's what I'm assuming from the question. Um, is Evelyn in? Does she look? Yeah, let me ask Evelyn, if you're here, can you go into chat and say something or raise your hand? Either way. Oh, I'm here. It's, oh, you're GG. Is that you? Okay, I'll bring you on right now. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. She is here and she should be joining us right now. Evelyn, are Love you there? Wives. Hi, Evelyn. Hi. Hi, how are Elev you? Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, Evelyn. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? How's everyone doing? Excited great, to be here. Great, great. We're all great. good. We're all good. We're so happy to be live. And what a lovely photo you've sent in. Is this your first time joining us? Yes. Fantastic. Are you a new member to Design Space? Yes. Oh, welcome. Awesome. Welcome. welcome. Yay. We you. love our newbies as much as we love our OGs. I got to tell you, you guys. Are <laughs> OGs. OGs. <laughs> so Evelyn, um, I was I was very impressed with this lovely photo that you sent in. And it sounded like you wanted, you felt like you wanted to update this. And then if I'm correct, it said that you have already painted everything. Uh, one of my, Lisa's favorite colors, Benjamin Moore White Dove. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Yes. Yes. And would that include actually the colors uh, that I see kind of in a lovely sand tone right now as well? Yes. The, the mantle and the moldings are pure white. Or I, okay. I would say uh, it's actually simply white, also by Benjamin Moore, and then the the rest is uh, white dove. So the okay. areas that are darker are white dove now. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, very good, good. So here's the situation. Um, you were interested maybe in um, you maybe updating this somehow, and I wasn't sure if. Uh, I wanted to get it because there's a lot of things I can suggest for you. One of which would be to, yes, remove some of this very heavy um, uh, molding style details. Don't know how far you want to go with it, because if you wanted to go to something as contemporary as this. All right. Yes, or, that would be awesome. Love so that. this is. 
So this is a photograph of someone who's in process right now in my inner circle program. And he's redoing his entire living room and his fireplace just was a super plain. It wasn't even as detailed as yours. Um, uh, but, but we got him clad in a book matched quartz material um, that he selected, which is gorgeous, right? And that could be a gorgeous transition from what this is now. Now, you're going to have to pull this, this, um, all of this off, right? And yeah. you're also going to... Excuse me, sorry. Lisa, can you annotate? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to kind of show this kind of image, get an inspo image pulled together, um, and maybe even take a look at maybe some slabs or some porcelain materials that you might want to consider for this. And then what will happen is you're going to demo this out. This looks slightly narrower than this is. So there might be a little furring out of this area right up here that has to go up to the ceiling like that. And that's fine. It's super easy and inexpensive to do. You have a lovely big fireplace right here, it looks like, right? This is a gas yeah. bed, is it not? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. This will probably need to go, all right? So from the standpoint that it'll go uh, away from the standpoint that we're going to pull this out from the wall and bring it across like this, but you're not going to have that super deep hearth because it's all going to be that lovely monolith that um, you liked in the other image, which is great. And then we'll just surround the nice firebox. Don't even have to replace it, right? Which is great with your um, uh, with your new material. Oops, let me go to this one. With your new material, you know, all the way around here. And what's great is that this is this particular material was quartz or stone. I can't remember. He might have actually put real stone. Um, I have a question. But, I have a question regarding uh, quartz. Is that okay to put around the fireplace? Uh, yes, as long as it's one of the gas ones. You can't do a regular wood burning box with quartz okay. because of the heat. Okay, but a regular gas fireplace doesn't put out enough heat to really bother the bother the quartz. Porcelains are better because they now make those beautiful porcelain slabs that are, you know, giant. They're like eight feet tall. Right. So um, you can get these fabulous uh, floor to ceiling looks for very reasonable prices with these porcelain slabs. Um, and uh, uh, and what they do is they just fur it out so it's all straight underneath and then they just apply the porcelain straight to it and bingo, you are transformed. So now here's your homework, all right? Even though you're not an inner circle, I'm giving you homework, which is as a newbie, you have to take a picture of it just like it is with a new paint job. And then what you wanna do is give us progress photos and post them in the club so that when we see you getting your work done, we can all share in it. Sounds amazing, thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Evelyn. One more thing, because I that looks um, that looks very modern, which is beautiful. But yes. do I do I do like um, a shelf or something in for decorative items, or do I just leave it? Because that sounds that the picture doesn't have any of that. No, that's correct. That's because he's in process right now. He is going to actually be installing a. So he's got a little bit of a different style statement than you have going on. So he's going to actually be installing a floating shelf right here, if I'm correct. Ooh. Yes, which is which will be out of the same wood that he's got on the floor. So that's kind of his look. But you can absolutely do something that's a little bit more transitional with a fireplace front that um, uh, that would add a mantle that would give you a surface like that, that would give you the ability to put some stuff up maybe for the holidays or things like that. So absolutely, these are not um, uh, these are not uh, isolated to be just super uh, contemporary like that. In fact, here's another piece of homework for you, Evelyn. I'm gonna have you do a little inspo uh, 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 
uh, exercise on how you, uh, on other fireplaces that you see that are marble clad like this that may have a little bit of a transitional um, uh, mantle detail. How about that? Perfect. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. So exciting. Thank you. This was amazing. Evelyn, and welcome to the design space. You know thank what? You. We are here to get you where you need to go. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Evelyn. Yes. Okay. okay. Good, good, good. Now, um, I have another question. Um, oh, that wasn't it. It wasn't actually submitted with a picture. So I'm going to talk about it because it was a really good question. And I get it a lot on YouTube as well, which is that um, Vivian said to me, can you mix she has an industrial space that she's in. So it might be a loft. It might be something urban. I don't, I'm not sure. And she has traditional furnishings. And here's the deal. I am talking later this morning about part three of how to mix your design styles, how to mix design styles, okay, um, for your home. And here's the deal. You want to go back and make sure that you watched parts one and two, which are in where, Maggie? Uh, they're in the video section of Design Space. Yes, yes. And then part three, which is the real where the rubber meets the road, which is how to mix design styles, which your question is all about, is going to be uh, shown today. And that'll be in the um, club. Uh, when? Mm -hmm. but about two more days so um <laughs> might take a little bit longer maybe three. as quickly as possible <laughs> yeah. yes or you could catch it on the live youtube stream all right so um i will have your answer for you today okay good vivian thank you for submitting that um i loved it because i get questions literally into the studio the whole team gets them every uh oh, every every day third day mm -hmm. Something like that. It's amazing. Okay. Now, okay. do I have time for one more? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, good. So I am going to, let's do this. Oh, Karen. Wow. You sent me some big pictures, girly. Karen. Is Karen here today? Karen Gore. Karen Gore. Yes. Yeah. Our, one of our faves. One of our Hi, inner she's circle here. faves. Karen, can Are you big? Hey, Karen. Hi, how's it going? Hey, hey Dorlin, well. we're great. Good. How are you? I'm How are good. you holding up? Thank you. Oh, you know, it's none of it's a real problem. I'm holding up just fine. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real problem for you. Come on, well. we got to get this stuff fixed. So, <laughs> right. oh my goodness. All right. So, um, <clears throat> So Karen, just to give everybody a little bit of a preface, is one of our Inner Circle members, and she's a veteran. This is her second series that she's doing because she has this fantastic house that completely needed to be redone, needed a whole update. And um, she's uh, blessed with a architect husband. But as we know, sometimes architects can't quite answer all the things that we need to have answered. So Karen has joined us in Inner Circle and we have done some amazing things together. I cannot wait to get that kitchen installed. Uh, it's so That's close, amazing. it's so close. <laughs> and, and just, so everybody, just to watch just, it. <laughs> and just, yeah. for everybody, just for everybody to know, guys uh, on YouTube, I know design club people know this, but um, really Inner Circle is an opportunity for you to work with Lisa privately and have her really coach you through your entire pro project of your home, whether it's building it from scratch or doing a kitchen or a bathroom. Um, really, we take on anything. So if you're interested, I just posted a link that gives you some more information in the chat on, not in Zoom, but I put it into uh, YouTube. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and where do we stand, Dana, for September? on that just you know, a few more spaces because we have a few more people graduating we just had someone graduate last night and so that oh i know oh that i'm sad. so excited to see their it, work it, it was exciting but it was sad to see him go we, we it was him. it was you know you come into inner circle and you become part of our studio for mm, five six months 
right? Because it takes some time to get some things done. So, right, Karen? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, sorry for interrupting, Karen. Oh, yes, no, 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 sorry, darling. No, no, I was just saying that our kitchen is super close. They just came to do templates for the counters and uh, we're getting there. Exciting. Oh, templates mm-hmm. for counters. Okay, now you're going to go down and talk to them when they're doing the stone cutting, right? Nate, Nate went uh, yesterday and checked the, the, the layout and what stones are going to be used for where, checked the book matching aspects of it, all that business. Did he send you pictures? Yes, he did. Did you sign off on them? <laughs> well, the, 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 the fabricator had sent me pictures already. And I, I said that it looked good. I was concerned about where some of the little spots in the, you know, because our stone has some spotty part, like parts that have little spots yes. in it. Yes. And um, they're going to be in places that are sort of hidden. And Nate made sure that the best exactly. piece is going to be on the island. So um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, oh, know, my gosh. In yeah. fact, um, this is what I hope. Hang on a second. I am hoping you got this sent to you. Uh, let's take a look a second. I am going to show people this because this is a part of, you know, when we see inspo and then we go, this is what I want for my home, right? What we don't understand a lot of times is the processes that are involved behind the scenes that you should be knowing about that can go way wrong because in, um, oh. Okay, nothing else can go way wrong, please. I'm sorry, Karen's already lived through one thing that can go way wrong, right? But stone is super important because all these beautiful pictures we love, right? Oh, love Mm -hmm. all of this, right? Yummy. But let me tell you this, guys. If this did not show up by accident, okay, this has to be done like, uh, okay, so there's picking slabs. But let me show you this picture. See this picture here? Yes, I've seen that. Yes, that's super important, right? And so that's what I'm hoping you, the pictures were that your hubs sent over. And Actually, that's said, what the fabricator sent me before my hubs was at, even over there. I sent Nate over to check it in person. Perfect. Because see this go, big old... My mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because exactly like what you're talking about, this stone, very specific type of stone... Um, kind of a crystallized quartzite. This has this big uh, problem in it, okay? Right. And if you are not telling your contractor that you want to be there during this process, he'll put this smack dab in the middle of your kitchen counter. Right. Because he doesn't care. He's just going to lay this out the way he wants to lay it out to make it easy, right? Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want to control that. So this was done to make sure... And this is a process every one of you can do if you know how to do it um, by uh, 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 by going down and standing there and going, I want this to be countertop left. I want this to be countertop right. I want this to be where the sink goes or I want this to be, you know, the opening where the sink is. All of that can be worked out in advance. And at the time, you can also make sure that you're telling them exactly what you want in terms of the edge detail. Because if you do not delineate that with them, they are going to do what's called a laminated edge. And oy, 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 you do not want a laminated edge, guys. You want a mitered and then it can be either an OG or a straight edge, the bull nose, whatever kind of edge design you want, but you never want it laminated because that is the cheap man's way out. And you are going to hate your counter's edges and you're going to stare at it forever. So that's I was really very clear important. on the, I was very clear on mitered um, straight edge, how many inches and Nate actually did drawings to show exactly what we want it to look like. (laughs) Nate, he's so good. I love him. So see this this edge detail right here, guys? This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say I want a mitered edge. Now, this is the mitered waterfall edge, right? So not only do they have to cut this at a 45 and this at a 45, but when they do that, guys, you get this kind of job detail, right? where you have this beautiful edge that flows over. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. If you did not 
have mitered detail called out, you would have a seam running along here, just like that. And this pattern would be running this way, and this would be this way, and your entire kitchen counter detail with all that stone that you spent all that money for would be ruined just like that, just because you didn't know to go down there and tell them this. Yeah, so and, it is and, super and, it, and it would look cheap. It would look cheap. It look, would look like an apartment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which is not what you want when you're spending, you know, yes. seven, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars for for um stone. So, oh gosh, sorry, I got all excited. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, worry not. I'm all excited about the that. I came to my house and then he sent me <laughs> photos and then Nate went to to his place to see the stone laid out and all that and check everything. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, good. All right. Let me, I'm oh, sorry. I, I got all, I got, oh, I no, got it's important. I got frothy. Stone is so important. I have done, I have done multiple types of lectures, not lectures, but I have done because it's one of the biggest mistakes I see when people have done their kitchens and it's really easy to spot because it's simple details that just take it down a notch so that it doesn't look quite like that vision you had in your mind. And right. that's the important thing, you know, yeah. is understanding process. All right, darling, let's talk about valances. Cause I've got an easy answer for you on that one, um, which You're I think make you'll me be happy it. about. Oh, really? No, oh, because <laughs> um, I know. Right. 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 Um, we no, have sort of more, a more industrial feel in that specific room. You can't see the table, but it's pretty rustic looking. And Oops. anyway, Sorry. Uh, ooh, how did that happen? Oh, a pop. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's the deal: is Karen, because we've been working together for a couple months at this point. I know this house project very well. It's, she has a very lovely contemporary home. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, in an urban setting in the U.S. here, and she's got these fantastic roller blinds in there, and they are needing a valance. But here's the deal: typically, people think about valances and they think about these big, heavy boxes and super decorative and that's not the design that's not a continuation of a detail that's a design style statement that works for someone like Karen who has a more contemporary style so there is who installed these for you doll my husband no but i mean where'd you buy them oh um where we get them what's that place it's always saying smith and noble yeah smith and I, noble okay pretty sure right. So we're going to have to go outside of Smith & Noble because they don't do this kind of valance. Shade Store does, but mm -hmm. Shade Store does over their things. But it's very simple and easy. You're going oh, to get- It could be the Shade Store. Nate just said it could be the Shade Store. Oh, if it's a I Shade feel... Store, it's great. Okay. I feel you the can... need to point out that like um, those floors are going. <laughs> huh? for everyone. I know I you know, know that, but just for everyone else, I just feel the need to, yeah. Okay. I know. You're so cute. I love it. So you are going to do a super tiny metal box, okay, that runs along uh -huh. here. J literally, it is like three inches. It's nothing, okay. Okay? okay? And they do a smooth finish on You can do it actually in a, in a, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. you can do it in metal. You can also do it in just a uh, paint grade ply. Okay. It doesn't okay. matter what they do it in. They do, they do it in a matte metal? Get painted the same color as the wall in a matte finish, okay? So uh -huh. what it'll do is it just hides this mechanism right there. Yeah, right? okay. It's nothing. So it'll give you, it'll get, and, and I'm not worried about you guys. I would paint it the color of the wall because I don't know that you'll match the black and okay. the black will pop outside it just a little bit. And you guys have plenty of ceiling height, so it's not a problem to do the three inch. But yeah, it'll just run along like that. It'll literally look like an extension of the wall. And it'll okay. be- Super sleek and smooth. You won't even notice it. Okay. That'll be be okay. Because the thing is this, you don't really want to be seeing, this was the picture that tells the story, right? Yeah, you I don't know. want to walk into the room and see this bracket. Because it that's looks like nine feet up above where you're, I mean, that's, it's a 10 foot ceiling. So it's, <laughs> I never noticed it till I took that picture. I was like, oh, look, there's a little red thing. I, I know it's really <laughs> funny, right? Yeah. And, and, and if someone is walking in, that's not the first thing they'll see, of course, because you're designing, you know, your focal point. There's uh, all sorts of other stuff that's going to be in there that's, that's not in the photo. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But just having this little edge cleaned up just like that, it will make such a difference. So it'll be super smooth and elegant. 
And, and minimalist, is there nothing like your can, style. She wants the front too. Is there nothing that could just cover that edge? Yeah, not really, because what happens is It'll there's this edge, weird part. Edge. Yeah, and then there's this part. So it actually does have to go, it has to literally go down like this. Oops, let me see if I can draw without it. part, there's not an, a lot of room between the two rollers. There's you know, not. The there's not. So there's literally just a front. That, that's why they have to build this custom for you. Okay. Oh, and <laughs> that's why you can't get Smith and Noble to do ah, it. But okay. it's easy to get, you know, a craftsman to do it. So it'll just do okay. that. Come down like that. And this is all just on the front. It's like a little uh, L shape uh, uh, yeah. configuration. Oh, I see. So it'll just run it'll along like continuous. that. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And so it'll just run along like that and do the same thing on the other edge. Okay. Yeah. It'll look great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm excited. You know what it is? It's like, I'm not a big valance babe either because I'm uh -huh. not super traditional in my own personal style statement. Um, I'm more transitional, but mm -hmm. I do like cleaned up drapery. You know, yeah. I, I like finished window treatments um, because I think it's important to sort of like make sure that all those little details are kind of handled um, and it will, it will not cost anything. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right. All right. Great, honey. You. Great Appreciate question it. to submit. I love it. Yay. Didn't we just do something on window treatments recently? Yeah, that's what yeah. I asked the question was during that and and Megan suggested uh, okay. um, by submitting it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very anyway. good. Okay. Good, I'm going to mute myself again. Thank you guys so much. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Honey. I'm so glad you're here today. All right. Good. All right. Good. Good. All and right. so you guys just got to witness kind of a little mini inner circle session. And mind you, this was a this is obviously a window treatment, so a smaller detail, but of course the inner circle covers much more than that. So if you are even thinking about uh, a kitchen remodel, a bath remodel, or really anything like building a new house, whatever it is, uh, you need the inner circle now um, because you want to get Lisa's input um, before you start making some solid decisions and solid plans because she's going to catch errors. She's going to uh, come up with better uh, and more budget friendly solutions for you. So all in all. Um, it's a very good idea to check out the inner circle. And if you're interested, um, I want to post a link to one of our websites that will give you more information about that. And let me do that. I'm going to do that both in Zoom and YouTube really quick. And I was also going to say that on um, the Zoom on the Zoom feed, there's a hashtag going around called should have called Lisa. <laughs> yes. Hashtag should have called Lisa. Uh-huh. You don't want to be that person saying that, by the way. You're, you're going to be. <laughs> Yeah, I, called Lisa. I called Lisa. Oh, for sure. Yes. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm going to say this too, which is that for everybody out there, there is, that is thinking about doing a project, here's the real reality. Um, I just wrote up the other day, a checklist for how to start a project. And it will surprise you because it probably doesn't incorporate all the things you're thinking of. But it's a checklist written by someone like me, who's a professional, who does this all the time and gives you your real starting point. And surprise, guys, it's way earlier than you think. Because I have a lot of people that come up to me and say, Oh, I, I, I don't start with my contractor until, you know, uh, three months from now. I'm like, you should have been talking me, to me a month ago because so, minimum planning to do a job that keeps you in control and keeps you in budget, okay, requires some pre-planning. And that pre-planning can take, ask anybody in our inner circle groups, that pre-planning can take three to six months, depending on how big your project is. So it would surprise you because most people, I've had some people, we've started an inner circle program and the first time I meet them, they're standing in a demoed kitchen. Oh, I'm like, what, what, people what was your plan from here? What people, Lisa, what people don't understand is taking on any design projects, a very complicated process. It and is. You can't just go and do YouTube videos and get the gist of your space. It's no. so bespoke, your countertops, your flooring, the fact that you, your roommate, your husband, just there's a million reasons why 
It's just different. And without that bespoke help, which is what we try to give, um, you can have disasters on your hands. So what we, what you did, Lisa, I didn't do this. What she did is Lisa put together a checklist and I'm going to put, I'm going to put the, um, the link on YouTube in a second here. Um, but just click on that. Uh, it'll, it'll be in the, the comments, but, um, that checklist, if you click on it, give us your email. If you're not a part of our email, let's just give it to our, our, us your email. And what you're going to get in return is Lisa's checklist on how to start a project. And it is amazing to see what it is. So I'm going to, I'm going to post it right now. So there it is. So you can go on to chat and you could cl click on that link. We'll also put it in the comments later on at the end of the day. And also put it in, in Zoom right now because you guys can go and you're already on our email. Yes, list. I was just going to say, because there too. might be folks that are already part of design space that um, may be contemplating something and yeah. aren't sure how to start. How so to start is both a places and we'll we'll um, we'll put both an inner circle and the, the, the free checklist for um, that you pulled together. I know she Lisa worked on it like uh, for a week trying to get it right. I mean, it's you, you know, the stuff, but it's insane how much is on there. Oh, mm -hmm. and I'm going to answer you right now live, Julia, which is I'm building a house, but haven't decided on a floor plan yet. Okay. There are some sites you need to send over a question to ask Lisa. I can give you some information about where to go to take a look at some more contemporary sites, but you are definitely right now, you are definitely should be thinking about inner circle because that is at minimum being uh, being in design space but uh but to inner circle as well because there's i mean there's people here that have that have done one inner circle just to get their plans right like sonia um uh, uh, uh michelle there's like three or four people that have just done one inner circle just to get your plan and flow and adjacency relationships correct because if you don't get your programming and your adjacencies and your traffic flow and all of your other parameters that you need correct on your plan it is downhill from there guys you need to organize it and you need to know how you're going to organize how you're going to use the space how it's going to set up and how to communicate that to someone who can draw that up for you to get it built right because there's a lot of there's a lot of conceptual work that's done in design but then there's a lot of process somebody Lisa? actually has to physically put a nail in a wall to get you your home i right? think Karen wanted to say something so oh, I, I brought her on sorry Karen? i did oh oh so your hand is raised is that oh. an accident <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was asking Nate. I'm like, how do I change my background? Because looking at oh, my yeah. background, I was remembering that I had that. Yeah, hey, Karen. No. Oh, but Karen, since we're talking about inner circle, how's been your experience? I mean, just yeah. is this oh, it's been amazing. I mean, it's it's been it's been like a whole whirlwind of emotions. I mean, there at early on, I was like drinking from a fire hose um because there was so much to learn and so much to figure out and do and and all of that. And um but it's been amazing because I had complete like analysis paralysis. I had no idea what to do. I had a whole idea of things I liked and I just couldn't figure out where to start. And I'd spent months just in a holding pattern because I couldn't, I was afraid of making decisions basically because I was second yeah. guessing myself yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Um, and Lisa is, you know, very open-minded and at the same time, very decisive. Like, she knows when something's not going to to work or when something makes more sense or how to do it and and even just having the the comfort of knowing that here's this person who's brilliant with design and thinks that this idea is going to work you know then you you stop questioning yourself so much and you know and i love that lisa can work with any design style as, as lisa said she's more of a transitional gal i'm definitely a pretty modern uh taste type person oh, as yeah. as is my husband and um but that's not an issue because Lisa's not trying to to put her style on you. She's bringing yes. out your the yes. best out of your style, yes. which is phenomenal. And you know she knows all the right questions to ask. She anticipates issues, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so for someone like me who can be a little bit of I don't know a nervous Nelly, <laughs> um, it's very <laughs> oh, just a alone. little bit. Um, it's incredibly helpful. And you know I just didn't I don't have the confidence in my 
in my decision making on that stuff. And there's a whole world of options that I don't even know about. Um, and so, you know, Lisa, Lisa knows all of them. So it's it's been um, it's been amazing. And then when I mean, there was a time that I was in the middle of my kitchen with I don't know how many different trades people <laughs> in my GC. And I don't with some decision. I don't even remember what it was had to be made. And Lisa was on the phone with me pointing out what to do and make sure that, you know, that you did it, you know, whatever it was. And, um, you know, it was it was so incredibly helpful. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it, it makes this because I'm doing so much of the house. It makes the whole thing manageable. And, uh, you know, it's it's been amazing and well worth the money. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Thank the you. amount that I've saved. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that's that's actually true, too, because people tend to think, oh, I'm not going to I'm not going to get any help because I don't want to take that amount out of maybe my budget. And the reality yeah. of it is, and I've said this for years, which is that if you get the right advice from the right person, then that money is is going to save you so much money in the long term. You can't yeah. even believe it. Just a single mistake like stone. You know, yeah, like sure. we were just talking about, oh my gosh. So yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, a, a process. And I think the thing that you said that I think is really lovely that a lot of people can relate to is it's sometimes a little bit like you think you've got it and then you get a little bit in the door with it. And all of a sudden, I mean, there was somebody who literally joined inner circle, with her hair on fire last week because she's got a contractor who has not given her their critical path information in advance. So she's now forced to make all of her finished selections, mm. flooring, all of her carpet, all of her wood floors, all of her kitchen cabinets, all of her stone for her fireplace, all of that by Monday. Now, Yikes. that's a problem we could have avoided. Yeah, okay, definitely, so. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, Karen, thank you so much for being on with us. We got a few more things to do today, but I yes, just yes, yeah. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to sorry. raise my hand. No, I did it was something no, stupid. No, it's okay. I, this was completely uh, unrehearsed. That was <laughs> yes, off the yeah. top of my head in the morning. I, no, no less. Thank you, Karen. All right. And you. for those Bye. of you guys on YouTube who are actually, we have a number of people for, on YouTube that are not in the U.S. or Canada. Um, I would say one quarter of all the people that I work with in Inner Circle are actually not on this continent. We've done, mm -hmm. a, a, we've done, oh gosh, we've done people in Denmark. We've done people in Italy. We've done work with people uh, uh, in Germany, in the UK. I mean, so it's, it's a whole thing. And we have a whole group of you guys that are from all over the world in design space. So there's just a wealth of knowledge there too. So, guys. so Megan, what is up for the rest of the show? I got to move so, us. On. So I was thinking this. So speaking of international uh, design um, and in honor of our upcoming ebook, all about trim and molding, <laughs> I want soon. to do, yes, coming soon, you guys. Um, and again, exclusive to design space. But I want to show Lisa a picture and I want her to do a design style breakdown of it. And I was recently in is Victoria. A, is, is this a what would Lisa do? Is that a what? This, I think we could actually do that too. I'd be, I'd be super curious what Lisa would do different, differently here because this is a, very much a look. Uh, but this is the Parliament building in, in Victoria, Canada. Um, I was just there a couple of weeks ago and I just wow. saw the stream and molding and was like, to die for, right? So it's stunning. It's a stunning spot, but I, oh yeah, I'd be super goodness. curious what you would do <laughs> oh my gosh all right hang on one second i have to oh wait maybe i can annotate on here yes i can okay Ooh, look at this okay so this is an exceptionally gorgeous neoclassic interpretation of a public hall wow i am I in a, love I with have a couple of questions about this if you maybe this can help sure when I look at the upper half of the, the upper part of the structure, it's very, I don't know. This area from here up. I can't see what you're doing, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks yeah. very ethereal. Can you use yeah. red instead of green? I, I don't know. Let me see how I can fix that. That is really okay. weird. Yeah. 
Oh, but, oh format. Excuse me. Hang on. Uh, let me make what? it fatter for one and red. There we go. Okay. Yeah. In this area. Yeah. Where is it? Um, I think there's a little bit of a delay. Yeah. The yeah. Are you are you talking about that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just talking about the entire ceiling structure. It feels very almost contemporary. Um, oh, no. Then the bottom section looks a little gothicy. I don't know. It's, <laughs> okay. It's so no. So let's let's break this down. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So we have Doric columns made out of carved solid stone okay so this is this is where i'm getting my neoclassic revival um uh feels okay this is absolutely see these these column co tops that doric detail oh my gosh it doesn't get more neoclassic neither does uh it get more neoclassic than this gorgeous 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 and quite large scale but you need to have it large scale dental molding right and then all of this applied okay all of this applied in very specific patterns see these gold leaves then you have this white and this these circles those are all neoclassic interpretations so if you think about the regency period okay the regency period was a little bit neoclassic but it had a little bit of kind of the the earlier interpretations of um of uh, the, the Regency style wasn't wasn't a hard and fast neoclassic revival yet. It was as the as um, the Prince Regent became king. It was when you began to see in Europe, and that's the influence for this, of course. Um, uh, is is in Europe you saw you saw a hard and fast neoclassic revival come in. And so, what is that? What is neoclassic revival? It's an a reinterpretation of early Roman ideals. So when you see lines like this of gold leaf that looks like the gold filigree that the emperors would wear around their head, okay? So things like that are definitely neoclassic. The Doric column, you never see a Doric column other than in Rome, right? So that's very that's very specific. This is where it gets, oh, there, there's this um, pediment up on the top of what looks like the the speaker's chair backing. I'm not quite sure. Someone in Canada might know a little bit more than I do. Um, with this pediment shaped detail here, that's a very neoclassic detail. Now, they go a little outside the lines with this curved Jacobian column right there, but I'm gonna let them go. And when you said Gothic, it's because this uh, particular type of molding right here with the pointed, egg and dart is earlier than neoclassic. It's actually Gothic revival, which is a little bit more Victorian. But you know, this is probably, I don't know what the date is on this building, but this is probably a happy mix of uh, neoclassic revival and Gothic revival, which would sit at probably uh, late 1800, something like that. Does anybody know what the date on this building is? I'm not sure actually, but that, that sounds right. Yes, yes. An exquisite molding exercise beyond words. And, you know, yeah, these details you never really look at because these are functions. These are functional aspects of the building. So I'm not even really looking at what the what the statement is. All of this gorgeous. Ooh, I have an inner circle person who's doing a, a, a residence from 1765 and she is restoring it, guys. And we just talked about carnelian marble yesterday. And that's carnelian marble, which was a hugely popular marble in the Victorian and the Georgian period. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to say uh, it's Victoria. Oh, that's right. Named yeah. after Queen Victoria. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> So you know yes, what, guys, guys, I think that this building with, might be of the Victorian era. Yeah, so. <laughs> guys, with, with, with Chappy Chief, Chat GPT and AI and I don't know. Um, oh, I know, right? There's so no, much. No, and, and Google, you in two seconds, we just have to ask the, the group and we'll get the answer. Yes, yeah, and, yes, and yes. it was constructed in the late 1800s. Uh, Christine, uh, it was it was constructed from 1893 to 1897. And yeah. this is a big build. This is a huge building, by the way. Yes. Like it's stunning on the outside too. Four years, that's all it took. 
Do so Bill kind of or Jonathan know the year uh the 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 year Victoria's reign ended? I'm not sure of that. Uh it's 1901. 1901. Okay. Constructed 1893 to 1897. Oh, smack dab, baby. Oh, we're, no, we're, you know, I and it's to... late Victorian because, you know, yeah. as we all know, she reigned for a long time. So that building being late Victorian, mixing the uh 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 mixing the design styles of uh uh, uh Gothic revival and Edwardian, uh, not Edwardian, but uh, neoclassic revival, absolutely smack on late Victorian. Beautiful, beautiful building. Oh my gosh. Yeah, awesome. Mary Beth said, um, Carnelia and Marvel, how exciting is part of my nurse circle project. Hey, yes, Mary, it is. I want everybody to see your comments, put it to everyone. You have it yeah. on host and panelists, unless you meant that just for us. Yeah. But we're well, getting, I think so I have both YouTube, I have YouTube on one side and I have um, Zoom on the other and I have <laughs> different people so we're getting comments left and right we're having to keep track of That's now fun. i have some more questions do we have time for more questions yeah we do okay, great yeah all right uh let's pop this one up this was a great one because i know so many folks that are really struggling with their entryways um and that's why i just put out that new video guys on entryways. If you have not seen it yet, who can someone post it in the chats because mm -hmm. it's really a good video on small space entries. And that's what this question is today. And I was super excited to have somebody submit something on it because you know, I've done I did it I've done a couple of videos on entryways that are in both the YouTube and um design space, but I hadn't really focused in on those really troublesome tiny entryways, right? Because they get so messy so fast. And this was um Edith's problem with this. I don't know if Edith is here today. Edith, if you're here, raise your hand or let us know in chat. Oh, she is. Okay, perfect. Oh, fantastic. Okay, I'll bring her up in just a second. I got to go find her. Oh, Edith. Okay. Got it. You'll be there in a, one second. Oh, oh, there we go. And drum roll for Edith. Drum roll? I love it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Oh, now she's there. Okay. She's Hi, Edith. Edith. Hi. Do you see me? Hi. Hi. No, we don't Hi. see. Yeah, we don't see you. We just hear you. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, so you, you can see that I have a, a problem to fit everything yes. in my entryway. So, and uh, and it gets a little bit difficult now to really understand where I need to move, um, how I need to move forward to clear that and have something welcoming. Yes. So yes. I try to fit everything: my shoes, handbags, keys, er absolutely everything. Yes, <laughs> so yes, it's a bit complex because uh, it needs to be practical and at the same time welcoming. So, yes, that's absolutely true, Edith. That's very true. And and oftentimes, um, what we see is a situation where we have to stack functions, um, yeah, which correct. means that we have to figure out how we're going to store our shoes, how we're going to hang coats, where we're going to put our purses, you know, gloves, hats, a light, um, maybe a coat or a jacket or a scarf, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. We have to combine purposes. So one of the things that I really like to see is um, what I call the stack. And I talk about that in the video a little bit more, where even if you have just a little bit of space, right, what you can mm -hmm. do is do storage down below. Now, this is just one interpretation. The video has okay. many, many, many versions of it. Um, but this is one interpretation. And they had just enough room for a shallow shelf. If you see inside it, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's between the door jam and here. So it's not a lot of space, but you don't need a lot of space, right? You need to be able to put your shoes to hear or something like that. Now, oftentimes yeah, I also yeah, yeah. like to put a closed top to the basket. Oh, I'll get this here. So that um, so that, that can't be peered into, right? But these baskets are great because you can just pull them out. Then you have a sitting area here, very welcoming. They've added the little pillows, which is kind of nice. Then they put some kind of fun decorative 
uh, hooks on the wall. They've added a little bit of, uh, it looks like shiplap here, but you could do anything. You could do a little accent painting um, or a little bit of peelable wallpaper if you're in a rental place. That's no problem. Then the other solution that I saw that I included in the video was this one, which is really tight and narrow because I thought of your space that you're submitting. And I went... Yep. Um, I'm not sure if you're in Europe or not, but I got to tell you, yes. <laughs> um, Ikea, um, I absolutely adore this unit from Ikea. And I want to say it's Hemnes. Uh, I'm not I, sure of it. I know that one. <laughs> it is, so yeah, actually, you know this yeah. one. Yes. And guys, yeah. <laughs> for those of you who don't know this Ikea product, it's called a tip out shoe storage. Oh my gosh. This little drawer tips out just like that. And you can pop your shoes in it, close it up. The thing is like six inches deep. It's nothing. And it's a great narrow solution. And what it does is it gives you the ability to put a little bit of shelf right there on the top. They added a thin standing mirror because a mirror is a good thing to have to make people feel welcome as well. A couple of hooks over here and they made sure it was well lit. So there's your, your, your composite and it's called out in that video as well. All right. So I want mm -hmm. you to go take a look at that one. Um, yeah. You know, when we're done today and it'll give you a lot of ideas about that. Okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, you're Lisa. so welcome. And I'm so glad you joined us. Where are you joining yeah. us from? Uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Oh, I oh, love nice. it. Oh, I wish I was there today. So <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah, you. Sure. All right, thanks, Ida. So, thank you. So we've had Donna raising her hand for a while. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. So okay. Donna, if you want to chat for whatever reason, can you go into um uh the chat and let us yeah. know yeah let us know if it was a it happens mistakes if it was just Sometimes let us know people think that uh, their hand is going to send like a little wave or something yeah no but i do know lisa i know um that we have our design style master class um to get to oh gosh yes yes okay oh gosh so I think, okay i think we should yeah do that and then afterwards we'll uh, hit the lightning round Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Cause I have a couple in lightning round. Oh, that desperately need me to talk to them. So yeah, yeah. Lisa, uh, I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, Colleen, sure. said, Colleen said in chat that she's has submitted questions a few times. Do we, ha did we answer Colleen's question last time? Do you remember? Um, I do not know uh, off the top of my head. It sounds familiar. Let me see if I see a resubmittal. Um, from a Colleen, huh? uh, yes, Colleen, pink bathroom. Oh, yes, honey. Um, I want to say I answered it. Woo, was it? A you month did answer ago? that. Oh, yeah, I a month did. Ago. Yes, yeah. extensively, honey. Yeah. Um, so, uh, check out the check out, yeah, the, hit me the, up and ask Lisa and go, can you tell me which date it was? Because I know, cause I keep records of when I sent them or when I did them. So I'll, I'll just hit me up and ask Lisa and go, what date was it? And I'll get that to you. Yay. Okay. Yay. On. Absolutely. Okay, great. So are we ready guys? Yes. All right, mixing styles part three. Long anticipated <laughs> masterclass. Yep. <laughs> Long anticipated masterclass. Yes, I think that's true, actually. Um, all right. So okay, here and we go. I'm gonna let everybody know on YouTube that we'll probably be running longer today. So um you might just in, for your own scheduling, we'll probably go to what about 11 45? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, that's Can't probably much a hard later. stop at 11.45. I know, right? I have a hard stop at 11.45. Yes. Okay. So that's specific pretty time sure of that. Me. Okay. Yes. All right. So here we go. Um, let me move this down and get, uh, uh, master classes, uh, up and running here. Yeah, and while okay. she's doing that, guys, yeah, it's so funny. Lisa said to me the other day, she said, I think we'll just do an hour today. And I said, you can never do an hour. There's never been <laughs> any once in three years we've not done an hour. And yes. it's like, where are we going? We're going to hit two hours today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is, um, it is so, uh, uh, 
It is so uh, crazy. I just have can't. That in your in your makeup. I don't have it in my uh, DNA. Yeah. No, it's absolutely. That's true. why we need me and Megan. We need Megan to keep everybody on the on. I, yeah, I'm trying. I, I do <laughs> oh, my best. I love it. But I'm love but it. I'm stuck. Like I'm listening too. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, yeah. She like over delivers. <laughs> she does. It just. I know, it but just, it's great. It's so much good information that I'm like. It's captivating. She's you know? the energy. So, she's the, yeah. the, 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 the thing that with the energizer power. bunny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. I love talking about this and I love answering people's questions. So yes. that's the thing that to me uh, gets me up every morning. Love it. Yeah. All right. So here's, here's the deal. Do we have links that we can post to the other two lectures? Because let me just say this guys, if you're just tuning in now, this is a part three of a three-part master class around understanding your design style and knowing how to mix styles, which is super important because 99% of all of us are not just one style. Now, you may be hard and fast on the uh, 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 on the super timeline of styles you have traditional you have the three super categories are traditional transitional and contemporary right and underneath those three super categories you have a lot of other oh, everything falls underneath one of them okay now many styles fall under more than one and it's hard to know how to mix like um uh, like Vivian asked, what do you do if you have an industrial space and traditional furniture? Well, Vivian, I hope you're still listening because here's the situation, which is you have to understand how to mix your styles. So number one step is you need to know what your style is. Okay. And number two step is you need to kind of define it into a way that creates your style within your home, okay? So you have to drill it down a little bit further. And then thirdly, if you're not sitting squarely in one label, like uh, 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 Megan is clearly a, um, uh, 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 a clean and contemporary gal. It's, there's no question about it. She has a little bit of minimalist, but they're a part of a blend and we're going to talk about that. But the whole idea there is that she's clearly one direction, but many of us are not. 95% probably of, of us are not. And so we got to know how to combine them and there are rules. And today is all about the rules. Okay. So get your pens out. I know some people are like, that's so old fashioned to make notes, but I am a pen and paper gal. So, um, and, and you just tend to be when you're in design. Okay. So the number one rule, all right. The number one rule guys for combining, oops, combining, uh, styles is to understand, oh gosh, how did this get so big? Okay. Uh, I am running out of computer space. Okay. Number one rule for understanding how to mix styles is, and it's an easy one. We talked a little bit about it when we were talking about the state house for um, British Columbia is you have to understand where on the timeline your styles fall because it's always easy to combine two styles that sit close together on the chronological timeline of style statements, okay? Because guys, we've been making style statements since we lived in caves, right? The first handprint on a wall, that's a design statement, okay? It's also a, an experiential and existential statement, but, but it is also a design statement. Where he chose to put that hand was a decision, and that's a design decision, okay? <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> you've been making decisions for a long time. Let's just bring it up a little bit closer. Since we've been sitting in chairs, we have defined our spaces. Okay. And there is definitely everything from the time that we were sitting in spaces all the way up through about the early, uh, the, the industrial age and the beginnings of, um, the early 20th century, so 1910, somewhere in that range, everything falls into kind of what's called the traditional category. Then you have 
a break line because the industrial revolution act actually gave us the ability to change how we worked with materials. We learned how to bend wood. We didn't know that before. We learned how to steam bend wood. So you got bent wood chairs. So all of a sudden, the ability to craft our environments started to look very different. And that's kind of the beginning of the birth of contemporary. Now, there's a lot more inside of those timelines. But for instance, if you were to say, I really like, mm, let's go to here. Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I got all excited about that history lesson for a second and didn't get my thing pulled together. Okay, oh, there we go, all right. So, um, so say your tastes lean towards the deco, Okay, which of course, this is clearly a deco space. Here's another really gorgeous uh, deco um, uh, 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 living space, which has some really gorgeous elements to it. All right. So if you're deco, um, it's going to be a little tricky to combine deco with something that is way further along the chronological timeline in either direction, right? So where you want to go is you want to go someplace nearby on that chronological line. And what's that? Oh, Hollywood Regency. Okay. Hollywood Regency. Deco starts ooh, somewhere right around uh, 1910, 19, uh, early 19s or early teens um, of the 20th century. Hollywood re and extends all the way up to the uh, like the 30s. Hollywood Regency picks up right after that because Holly re Hollywood Regency is, of course, based on the movies. And so they had all of these fantastic um, sets and images. Here's another very Hollywood Regency idea. And so why do these things that are close together on the timelines work so well together? Because they have similar styles and visual elements that are easy to pair. Here's another, you know, idea of kind of a blended look of kind of Hollywood and glam, maybe with a little bit of a, a deco style in terms of some of the coloration. Um, but what if you're not deco at all? What if you're, you know, super into contemporary? Well, depends on what kind of contemporary you're looking at, right? But this, these early Platner chairs and all of this, these are kind of the early industrial classics. So we talk about international style. So that's coming out of the late 50s, early 60s. Now, what sits right next to that on the chronological, on the chronological timeline? mid-century modern, right? Because it's the 50s. So you have a lot of this. Uh, this isn't particularly atomic mid-century. This is more classic mid-century with the post and beam detailing and peaked roofs, large glass windows. And what's this little chair sitting here right here? That's actually designed in the 40s, but if you saw my movie on why MCM is taking over the world through the Barbie, uh, the new Barbie movie that's out there, this chairs that all of the houses that were uh, designed by Neutra that were out there in Palm Springs um, were designed like in 48. So all of these international styles blend very nicely together with a little bit of a mid-century. Here's another example. That is classic. Uh, this is an image of Twiggy, for heaven's sakes. It doesn't get more 60s um, than that. But this little chair, late 1950s, or no, no, excuse me, early 50s, late 40s. So uh, uh, mid-century modern combined with contemporary modern. So very easy to do. And again, sits close on the timeline. Now, um, who was it who asked me about industrial. She has an industrial space. Okay. So here's the deal with industrial. This is a perfect example. So when we think about when understanding what the industrial style statement really is, it was an extrapolation of warehouse and 
machines that were being developed during the Victorian era. Okay. And so it was the first time you saw steam engines, you saw railroads, you saw all of these specifically man-made elements that started to come together. So this space, for instance, has clearly, it's, it was an old factory of some sort because you have these huge windows, you have these massive ceilings, these big girder beams. This is all very industrial. But what sits right next to industrial, what was happening almost at the same time parallel to the industrial revolution? Ha! What did I just talk to you about bending wood? This is the classic Thonet bentwood chair. This was developed in the 1890s, 1890s, I'm pretty sure. Um, someone might correct me on that. But this is the very first idea of changing how we use materials, right? So anything from that time period paired with the Industrial Revolution, when you say traditional, that's the kind of traditional you can blend with industrial well. Why? Because it's close together on the timeline. Okay, here's an, oh, uh, yeah, here's another example. Uh, the Chesterfield sofa, very Victorian, okay, but that's perfect because the industrial period worked really well with the, with the, uh, 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 what was part of the uh, the Victorian period? Okay, so same kind of ideas, you know, replicate yeah. through here. Now, Lisa, this is a, Lisa, yeah. Can I interrupt you for a minute? Yes, I think that we have some rugs that are too small. <laughs> <laughs> love those photos. Well, if you want to know more about rug sizes, you need to watch the video from today that released at ten o'clock, which talks about. The chat GPT, the biggest questions that people get that uh, get asked on, what's it called, Dana? You tell them. <laughs> no, it's, it's not chat GTP. Chat, chat GPT. <laughs> Say that three times in a row. Chat GPT. Um, anyway, guys, we, we were in the office just doing a little um, experiment and we wanted to find out like, what are the most asked questions throughout the internet? that people have for, for interior design, trying to figure out what our video is gonna be. And we basically just use that as, as the structure of the video. It was actually um, fun to do. And it was a little, I got to do a little fun editing and have anybody see that? It was fun, it was fun. Make sure everybody that you guys go see that video. Um, it's worth, a, it's really a fun video and it's, it's good. Yes, yes. So here's another uh, combination that sits close together on the timeline so it's easy to mix together which is <clears throat> excuse me farmhouse style okay now this is a little bit more of an updated farmhouse because it has the again that th chair in there um or you know here's another you know kind of farmhouse style right um and colonial revival Ooh, why do they mix well together? Because American colonial had farmhouses and they were being built at the same time as other different styles of American colonial were being built. So those are right there on the timeline together. So everything from like uh, mid 1700s all the way through to kind of like the uh, mm, mid eight uh, uh mid 1800s let's say um all of those periods those can be combined those style statements can be combined together because they're right there on the timeline okay so that guys is rule number one all right now uh let me stop sharing for a second and get myself organized on rule number two because these are super important concepts to understand and this one ooh, you better get that pen out for because this one starts to get a little bit more, a little trickier than just looking at a basic timeline. All right. <clears throat> so this rule is what I call, so I call this the, I, I call this kind of like the thematic rule of thumb with, <clears throat> with sharing, uh, uh, oops, let me grab, oh, oh. Let me grab this a second. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, you can tell it's live, can't you? Yeah, uh, right. Lisa's yeah, stuttering. Right. Okay, there we go. Share screen. Okay, boom. All right. So, what do I mean by thematic? Okay. 
So when you talk about design styles, we usually label them with something that has a reference point, right? So it could be anything from like desert modern, uh, uh, international modern, uh, Japan uh, 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 traditional, gothic, transitional, uh, contemporary, uh, j- uh, uh, you know, the uh, Scandi. There's all these different labels, right? Well, those labels talk about thematic elements that that style statement represents. Okay, so rule number two about how to combine styles is understanding your thematic statements. And when I say thematic, you need to think about things from two parts. It applies to the geographic information that you're applying to your home, okay? And the architectural um, detailing that you're applying to your home. And then in third place, there's also a functional aspect. So what is the space? That's the functional aspect. Uh, this particular space is a living room, okay? Um, what is the architecture? I'm assuming it's got some brick, uh, it's got some brick detailing and some things happening there. So I'm assuming that's um, some kind of traditional style of uh, home that has some brick detailing on. I haven't seen the outside, okay? And thirdly, I don't know the geography on this, but because I know the far, I know the style farmhouse, it's not likely to be located in the desert. Okay. So combining something like farmhouse style with desert modern is a no-go. That's like, forget it. You're dead in the water. Why? Because under your thematic rules, your geography doesn't apply. There are not farmhouses in the desert. There's nothing to farm out there, okay? There is a uh, separate type of set of functions often, and your architecture is radically different, okay? So even if you have something that might be a vintage building in the desert, it still doesn't read as a farmhouse. Almost 99% of everything in uh, desert uh, uh, spaces will read more contemporary because they were usually developed later. Another good example is um, pretty hard to combine the thematic uh, design style function of a ski lodge, okay, or a ski chalet, or a ski residence with a beach bungalow. They're just never going to mesh. Your architectural cues are off, your geography is off, and a lot of times your function is off. In this space, I'm grabbing my surfboard, okay? In this space, I'm freezing and I need skis. All right. So completely different functions. So understand that when you're looking at what your home is and what it represents, you guys up in British Columbia, pretty hard to pull off beach bungalow. You just don't have the geography for it. Okay. So it's one of those things that if you understand this simplistic idea about applying those rules, excuse me, you can absolutely then move forward with what does work, right? So for instance, let's go back to that desert modern for a second, okay? So desert modern, here's another example of desert modern, slightly older building than the original building that we had, okay? But still a desert modern style. But what you could do with that is you could combine mid-century modern. Now I'm going to tell you why in rule number three in just a second, because um, excuse me, the whole idea of desert modern and mid-century modern mix as well. Why? Because a good portion of the desert was developed in the middle of the 19th century because we were starting to use de- um, deserts outside of LA, deserts outside of different spaces in Morocco and places like that as playgrounds. And so we started to develop them in certain ways. And so they have a language that ties in with that. So thematically, as well as chronologically, they work well together, okay? Um, another good example, um, 
Japanese interiors. Oh my goodness. They are absolutely magnificent, especially if you're a, a, a fan of kind of a, a minimalist style statement. These are exquisite. All right. Uh, Scandinavian, completely different era places on the globe. Okay. But also has a little bit of the elements that play into the minimalist aspect of what happens with the Japanese. So what do you get? There's such a strong good combination that you get an actual dedicated style statement called Japandi, right? So Japandi is basically applying the principles of the Japanese space with the principles of the Scandinavian spaces, which often interweave together. Um, and so it's easy to, to develop a space that says it's Scandi. So that's understanding rule two, which is thematic, okay? Now, I'm gonna pop to rule three um, because we are probably gonna run out of time. <laughs> um, uh, because this one, again, you need your notepad for. Um, all right, so let me grab this. I actually made my notes, guys, because it is very, um, it's very important that you understand the three distinctions and why you're making the choices you make. Because when you understand why, then you make good choices. Super simple. Uh, all right, so let me get to, okay. Uh, oops, oh gosh, they get so big. Let me squeeze these down just a hair. Yes, we're live and Lisa's fumbling. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ah, all right. So let me pop this over here and share screen and here we go, okay. So rule three, okay, guys, for mixing your styles, I'm going to call it lifestyle or experiential understanding of style expression. Now, that's all very heady sounding. So let me give you a couple of examples because it makes it easier to understand. When we talk about the timeline of style statements, okay, they're very clear. You have the Victorian period, you have the Edwardian period, you have the um, uh, Louis the Fifteenth, okay, you have Louis the Sixteenth. Two very distinct periods, two Louis, two different periods, okay. So those are all very clear. Uh, Mid-century modern, uh, uh, international style modern. Um, yeah. Jonathan, what's your favorite again? Um, de deconstructionist from the uh, early eighties of the 21st century. Um, so all of these are timeline related. Okay. So those are clear and understandable. There's other design style statements that have become popular that can't be placed on that timeline in a clear way. And that's because they have different, different, um, they have different drivers, all right? That driver is this rule that we're talking about, which is what is the experience you want to have in your space? And what is your lifestyle as it is expressed through your space? These are two very important contributors to your final home and what it looks and feels like to be in it, okay? And those don't have timeline labels. Those have these labels, experiential labels, okay? So for instance, what would you say this room is, guys? Just throw it up in chat. What's a design style label that this image brings to your mind? Minimalist, What's lots of that, lots of minimalist guesses. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Okay, they're on their Contem way. Got contemporary, yes. also um, Japandi. Uh, uh, modern yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. The most, yeah. Okay, so now we got YouTube coming in. Simple, yes, it is absolutely simple. This clearly is what th this is not hard and fast Japandi or anything else. But what the one thing it is is minimalist. There's almost, there's no decor on the walls. There's very little decor even expressed in the statement. So this is a cleanly straight up minimalist statement. Okay. Now tell me what this one is. 
Now I know some of you might just type hot mess, but that's not really fair. Um, yeah, it is maximize. an expression. <laughs> it, it, the hot mess is cheating. <laughs> yeah, we've got some uh, bohemian guesses, lots of maximalists. Yes, yes, okay, yes, you're actually right on both. So it's bohemian and it's maximalist, okay? So both of those are experiential labels, okay? So <clears throat> if you are a person who's this kind of space appeals to you cannot make this style and this style mix it simply cannot happen they can't exist together in space it breaks all um it breaks all time space continuum rules <laughs> and it certainly sets up for a confusing message <laughs> here's another test give me a label on this one guys this is a little trickier, not quite as easy. Uh, we've got beach, coastal, coastal. Oh, coastal. what kind of coastal? Yeah, I was going to say, you guys were right about coastal, but which one? Okay, we have a west coast and then an east coast. <laughs> so, there you go. Okay, yeah. yes. BG Cottage Coastal. Yes, yes, yes. All of that's true. But what it really is, it is what we define as eastern coastal. Now, if you don't know the difference... The difference is that Eastern Coastal is more formal. Okay. Oh, I've labeled it. Oh my gosh. Oh, well. Um, Eastern Coastal is more formal. Okay. Because it was developed earlier, right? You did not have, you had a lot of people living on the Eastern coastline of the U.S. earlier um, than you did on the West Coast. So the Western casual or what we call California casual. Uh, sometimes it's called rustic beach. Uh, there's a lot of different labels. This, so they're both coastal guys, right? But they cannot be combined. Why? Because they have completely different style statement expressions. You go back to this one. This is bright, cheery, happy, has lovely sort of nautical elements, references blue and white. This screams a beautiful cottage in South Carolina or North Carolina, or maybe up on the, on the, um, on the coast of, of um, uh, 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 Canada. Uh, you know, there's, this just screams that to me. Um, whereas all of those design elements would look completely out of place in this space. Okay, because why? Because this is Cali. This is California. It's larger for one thing. Notice how this space goes up, right? This space goes out. We have openness. We look towards the ocean. We're wide. We're big. It's a huge state. The whole West Coast is so enormous. You know, the East Coast is much denser. They built up as opposed to out. So all of the um, expressions that you would have. Just look at the type of seating. This is all slow, loungy, lay around kind of thing. That is not, that's a prim little bench that you want to sit up right in. And that's fine because that's that statement and it does it beautifully. Okay. So those two can't live in the same space. These are expressions of thematic or lifestyle rules that you have to consider when you're applying mixing styles. So minimalist versus maximalist, okay? Um, another uh, 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 Eastern coastal versus California coastal, okay? Um, uh, 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 those kinds of thematic storylines uh, don't work well together. What does work well together? Okay, I'll show you here. Tell me what you think this is. Let's see, we've got traditional as a guess. Traditional, yes, we love mm -hmm. traditional. Traditional design has gotten a bad rap over the years. And I got to tell you, some of the most exquisite buildings in the world have mm -hmm. traditional interiors to them. Now, they may be overwrought for your personal taste, but that doesn't make them not good. <laughs> they are amazingly good. And I have seen some horrific contemporary stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of balance in both in, on both ends of that timeline spectrum. But this, for instance, is a beautiful little expression of 
two other things that we call um, uh, thematic, which are grand millennial. Okay, that's a whole style statement unto itself. And this one's got to push into maximalism because it's super busy. There's a lot of other grand millennial styles that aren't quite as busy and active as this particular one is. So this starts to lean towards maximalism. Again, it's a statement of the experience of the space. Okay, Um, here's another good expression. Um, This combines uh, rustic, which is actually a mindset. It's not really a chronological period because rustic um, expresses the idea of something that is worn. Now, you can you can you can have you can have something rustic in a Japandi space. It's relabeled Wabi Sabi there. Okay. So rustic is a concept. Rustic is a thim, not a thematic. It's a, an experiential language. Okay. So this is rustic and you also have farmhouse. Very easy to combine those two. Farmhouse is a thematic statement and rustic is a experiential statement. So those go together really nicely, right? Or how about this third one, which is uh, contemporary and organic, all right? So you have this lovely contemporary architecture, architecture being expressed, right? Big open windows, all the rest of this. But then it's got a softened note with this beautiful, um, uh, 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 what do you call them? Ch- uh, Tree stumps. Yes, thank you. Oh, okay. My brains just left the building. Um, so you have this lovely tree stump in there. So this begins to feel, and all these beautiful curves, the curves on these chairs, uh, feels a little bit organic modern. Organic modern actually is a design style unto itself, but it's kind of that combination of classic contemporary and the aspect of organic. Again, organic doesn't have any place on a timeline, guys. Organic is an experience that is expressed a certain way. All right. So that's the third rule of how to combine styles. Now, Fantastic. If- Lisa, I just want to point out the time just so you're aware. Yes. Uh, you're on a roll, but it's, oh a, my it's gosh. a little fast. It's okay. a little bit fast. Um, oh my uh, goodness. Okay. Your, your hard stop time. So I just wanted to alert you to that. Okay. So um, here what I'm going to do. All right. So whoops, 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 let me stop sharing for a second and I'm going to pull myself together and I'm going to flash through some uh, quick images of what you can mix. All right. Okay. Just to kind of like make it quick. Uh, oops. Nope. Sorry. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Uh, shoot. Okay. Let me get that down. I'm almost done. Sorry guys. Uh, let me double check something a second. How hard is my stop? <laughs> How hard is my stop? Oh, I got a few more minutes than I thought. Okay. Okay. okay good. I can go to like 12 or a few minutes after. So because we're on a roll and I really want to nail this for you guys because I get this question asked so often and I really want, oops, I really want it to be a good thing. And we have a couple more questions. So, um, all right, Lisa, if you could just work the keyboard like a pro that you're supposed to be. Oh, not really. (laughs) Okay. Here we go. Here's what you can do guys. All right. I'm sure this room appeals to a number of people, okay? This is, of course, a lovely expression of Scandi. And we love Scandi. It has such a restraint to it. It's calming for many of us. It has a Zen aspect to it, so it's lovely. So Scandi, um, as a timeline design style statement, blends beautifully with that restraint of minimalism, right? So you can take the idea of minimalist and you can express express it in a Scandi way. Here's the way to do it, guys. Here's your rule of thumb for how to mix. 
which is you never want to pick more than two statements because you will just lose your way. All right. And I know guys, there's a lot of yummy Pinterest and Instagram inspo out there. I just got to tell you every time you go there, it's like sticking your head in a fire hose and it will distract you. If you want to narrow things down, being a member of design space is going to help you because we go through things like this all the time, right? This is a beautiful combination of sort of Scandi a little bit of a minimalist. They've got a little bit more of a blend, but it's Scandi minimalist. Um, there's even a little bit of mid-century modern in here, but mid-century modern is a kind of an outgrowth of some of the Scandi. So there's ways to combine them. Here's the trick. You pick two and only two, and then you take Let's use the Fibonacci rule, okay? 60 and 30, all right, is that one design style. And then the 10% that is left can be that other design style statement. What does that mean? What that means is you take all of your main pieces, you take your palette, and you take um, the the most important uh, focal elements, okay? And those come from your primary design statement, okay? <clears throat> so if you were to look back at Scandi, all right? Primary design statement, all clean. Handled the bleached woods, handled the light uh, palette, handled that simplicity of... Um, of the design statements, the very simple uh, light fixture, those kinds of things. All of that is handled, okay? Um, but what have they done? That extra 10% is they've looked at the room and they've pulled out anything that is extraneous to give it a super minimalist uh, experience, okay? So that's a successful combination of Scandi and minimalism. That 60 30 60, 30 to one design style, which is your primary design style that you're working with. And then that extra 10%, which is often decor or often it might be editing or adding more, right? Um, let's go, let's go here for a second. Here's a boho space. Okay. Um, that's been combined to kind of have a lot of uh, elements going on in it. So it's a completely different look to it. Um, and what they've done is they've gone, okay, I'm going to combine a whole series of statements to sort of feel a little bit, um, a little bit uh, casual. Boho looks a little bit bohemian. So I've got expressions of a lot of different um, uh, style statements from around the world. Uh, and then I've given them a little bit of a, lick of palette uh, 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 color, uh, palette combinations that says kind of a global influence because they've got, you know, the, uh, they've got, uh, 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 sorry, what are the uh, hide, hide carpets, right? They've got drums over here. They've got, you know, an interesting uh, 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 interpretive portrait over here, which is lovely. This little urn looks like it might come out of India. So there's this global decor overlay that says boho global, right? So those work together really well. There's also, you could probably even say a little bit of a maximalist um, vibe to it because there is a lot going on, especially up on, kind of on this shelf. Um, uh, but, but it definitely has, note how nothing is out of place, even though there's a lot there, there's nothing out of place. And it's because sh they've, they've used that main rule, which was 60 plus 30, 90% is sort of that boho blend. They've been very careful with their palette and very intentional with their palette. And then they've popped that kind of soft top layer of global onto the top. So you have this really nice, interesting um, combination. It makes you want to go into the room and sit down and ask them questions about their life. That's when a room is really kind of successful, right? It sort of expresses that. <clears throat> so pick one as a primary. 
and then add smaller amounts. You can fudge it a little bit. It doesn't have to be 90-10. It can be 80-20. That's fine. But you want to get your main storylines, your um, your, ex, your your architectural statement, your uh, envelope, floors, walls, ceilings, your window style detailing, your door style detailing, your, uh, you know, millwork and cabinetry detailing. All of those need to line up pretty closely together. And they all need to work in a palette that expresses what your design statement's going to be, okay? Then you begin to kind of overlay and your bigger pieces, like your expensive uh, upholstery pieces, or maybe your large case pieces, those kinds of elements, all of those need to line up as well. And then that beautiful layer on the top that comes in can be that sort of decor, smaller accent chairs, things of that nature. Those are all that 20% that is that overlay, all right? So you really, really want to understand these principles because when you can apply these principles and you have that fluent language of that, you are not gonna fail, guys. You are not even going to make a mistake. So, um, so yes. All right. So good. I, I had to get that third one in there. I just wanted to kind of like show that up a little bit so that everybody has an understanding of sort of where they sat with it. Um, that last that last space has been uh, very interesting to to read the comments about it on chat. I mean, oh, it was really? kind of put, oh, what is it? put on yeah. put on full blast. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's yeah, it was an interesting space, that's for sure. And you're right. I would I would be curious to to learn who uh, who put that together and ask them what were they thinking. <laughs> you know, just just yes. wondering. Oh yeah, right, oh yeah. You know? No, these yeah. these all have valid. But I could just as easily. Okay, hold on one second. I could just as easily have used this space, guys, and said the exact same things. Oh sure. Totally different feel, right? But. Same language apply, same same sets of rules, excuse me, applied, and a deep understanding of the differences between international style modern and mid-century modern and how they combine together, right? And what is kind of what is the expression of that? It's a very this is a very, very interesting space. It's very intentional, very different, okay? And it uses all the rules, but absolutely delivers, right? Delivers what they wanted to say, right? In a way that makes you go, I would go in and ask that person, what about what's, what is their life like? I mean, this is a very interesting space, you know, mm -hmm. and how did they choose what they chose? Why did they make the decisions they made? Well, they were using these rules for sure. So, um, so yeah, so that's another, that's another just, you know, example of an expression. <laughs> okay. And you mentioned we have, uh, did you want, have time for more questions? Did you want to get to, to one or two? I or do you... have, yes. Hang on one second. I have like one or two more. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I can go a little bit longer. All okay, right, guys. Do, does everybody want me to go a little bit longer? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, yes. da, da. Okay. All right. Um, Oh, okay. All right. All right. Good, 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 good. Oh, that's another biggie. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, 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 okay. Let me share screen. Here we go. All right. I just have two, but um, that I have that I can do. So now this is Kate, uh, uh, Kate Blanchard. Um, now I believe. Kate, um, uh, uh, I don't know, but I think that Kate might be uh, uh, a new member of Design Space. I'm not sure if she's here today, um, but um, if she is, she could come up and, and give me a couple of answers on things. If she's not, um, uh, yeah, let us know. If you're here, Kate, uh, we'd love to chat with you and get answers from you directly. So uh, go ahead and ra either raise your hand or say you're here in chat. Yes, great. Okay. Good, good, good. So this is, by the way, Kate, yes, you're right. This is a lovely home. And she says in her um, in her question, she says, she's just purchased this home and they are just about to get started. 
And apparently the furnishings are going away because they were from an old, older or another type of home. And so I'm going to ask you this, Kate, which is um, if this is a brand new, not a brand, a brand new to you. Sorry, if this is a new structure to you and these are all your um, older furnishings, I'm assuming that you are going to start with a clean slate on this one. And that, honey, is the absolute recipe for someone who I would accept into the Inner Circle program. So if you are here and listening, you absolutely should talk to us because it's this kind of project that requires that planning in advance to for you to pull it off really successfully how you're imagining it and on your budget that you have, because that's really the, the tough thing, right? Is to make what you want appear on your in your home it, within budget um, and within a reasonable timeline. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to say, because it looks lovely. You've got these beautiful, it looks like some beautiful architecture. There's some interesting pieces in here. It doesn't look necessarily combined and it doesn't look like this house. And you've already said it. Uh, it's not going to be, but I'd be very curious to see what you're planning to do with that kitchen. It's looking maybe like that kitchen might change up a little bit. Don't know what you're doing with floors. And um, I would definitely suggest an overall paint change as I always do, guys. Here's a rule of thumb. Whenever you move into a new space, you want to make sure that you paint it. And guys, I know that everybody out there that are renters, they say, oh, I don't want to paint it because I don't want to get in trouble with my landlord. And I understand if you do have one of those landlords who does inspect, you can't do it. But what you do want to do is maybe grab the same color and go paint like one wall in your bedroom, the exact same color. Why? Because you want to get rid of the energy from the other owners or the other inhabitants of the space. So I always recommend in the planning for a new space that people consider a paint job. And I do on new construction too, because usually what new construction is, is they just slop whatever building standard stuff is in there um, on the walls. And, you know, it's not your color scheme. It's not your palette. It's not your design style. So you just kind of let them do what they do. They cover the house, they get out of your way. And then you're on your way to starting to build a home that you want to have. Okay. So that is Kate. Please, please contact me, honey. So you don't um, waste any money on that kind of thing. And Megan, how is that not right up your alley? It is absolutely. So Kate, please, please reach out. I'm going to be waiting for your email. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Now I had one last question. And this is from, uh, bu, 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 bu. oh, um, oh, there was somebody else that wrote in. Oh, she didn't send any pictures. And she said, <clears throat> I'm about to start a full remodel um, on my home, so I can't send you any pictures yet. Um, I don't even have any plans or elevations. And uh, Pam, Alan, uh, if you have not heard anything else in this broadcast today, darling, you need to contact us at Ask Lisa or um, whatever the email is for Inner Circle because no one should tackle a renovation of a home without some assistance. So you definitely need to make sure that you are talking to us in design space and or if you're planning to do any kind of construction, you may want to be talking to us about Inner Circle because it is super important to do your planning. And you should definitely um, uh, uh, check in and ask for how to start a project, that checklist, because that's an amazing, um, amazing guideline for you guys um, that, uh, that you want to you use. And then I'm just going to hit one last question, which was Lori, um, uh, Lori McGinnis. And I think Lori was here today, um, but she didn't send any um, images in. But she asked a question that I thought everyone should hear because I want you to know you're not alone. If you are tackling a home project of any kind, right? 
and you begin to second guess yourself and your choices, that's when you need to get questions answered by either a community or a pro, okay? Both are represented by being a member of Design Space because that's what help. That's what we're here for, guys. We're here. I literally had somebody say to me the other day, please, please accept me in the inner circle because I just need to be removed from the vortex. <laughs> and I laughed out loud because I went for, for so many of us, one decision asks another question. And then that asks a third question. And then there's just more questions, right? And then you start to lose your mind and go, am I doing any of this right? And that's when you start second guessing yourself. So Lori, honey, you are not alone. Everybody goes through that process unless they can check in with somebody like me or somebody in design space, that kind of thing, and get their questions answered, okay? That's why we're here. It's what gets me up every day of the week. Um, now, I actually do not have information. Um, oh, uh, oh, uh, da, 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 um, is this, I am, is this, is this Christy? This, this image that you're showing here? This might be Christy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, she's, yes. she is. I think she's anxiously awaiting talking to you. Um, oh, you fabulous. To... Okay. Christy, okay. Christy, Christy. Okay. Yes. Let pop me, on for us. Let me, and let me we'll get, get you there, one more Christy. question answered. Oh, one sec. Okay. I'll get her there. Okay. Christy. She is almost on. Hi, Christy. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Yeah, Hi, awesome. Christy. Welcome, Hello. welcome, welcome. Um, now, Christy, are you a newbie member or have you been an OG and lurking? I've been an OG and lurking. <laughs> <laughs> Learned <Nice>. a lot. <laughs> My goal is to bring you lurkers out from behind the curtain. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> we want you here. We want you to play. All right. So here's the deal, Christy. What a lovely home you have, by the way. Um, Thank you. And here's Christy's situation, which is she has a little bit of what I'm going to call an awkward space entry. And I, I don't have plans, so I can't show them everything. But from what I read of, of the imagery, um, there's a there's a way that people enter her home and they either go to the left and end up in the garage or they have to step to the right and they end up in this room and in particular kind of in this area and she's going i love my sofas in front of the the fireplace absolutely excellent it's a lovely solution for that but what do i do kind of over here well you do need to give that a purpose honey and so what i'm gonna tell you is that you need to this day there's there's an image actually that i used in this newest entry video that I really want you to take a look at because it shows an entry that is kind of like what you're talking about. It's sort of this extended into the big, bigger space, right? But what they did was they utilized some things. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to grab that specific image out of the video. So I'm going to need to just walk you through it, which is that you want to create on this wall here, okay, on this side wall, where you have the two big windows, um, you want to create, you kind of started to do something there. But what you want to do is create kind of a little entryway storyline um, that then gives it kind of a purpose that helps flow into there. And then what you're going to do Oh, why am I not annotating? I'm sorry. I get all lost in this. And then what you want to do is you want to give this little sofa baby back an anchor with a lovely kind of a console table or something like that. And on that console table, you're going to put something in a vase that's kind of high. All right. Um, but not heavy. OK, high, but maybe a sprig of, you know, olive leaf or, you know, something along those lines and maybe kind of a, you know, a tray or something like that, um, because what you want to do is you want to give just a kiss 
of spatial definition between this space that leads off of the front door and the rest of this room. You're not blocking it by any means, but you're just going, this little table belongs to the statement on this side of the room. And then the sofa continues through on this side and becomes the seating arrangement. And um, I was going to uh, double check on two things. I had two questions for you, which is, um, not sure how big your carpet is, but it might need to be just a smidgey bigger um, uh, oops, on this because uh, you want to make sure it's anchoring this entire uh, thing on there. So watch the video from today. Okay. And then okay. my last question to you, Christy, was this. You mentioned I, I'm really looking for a country cottage mm -hmm. now. Here's the deal, is that you have a number of elements that can go country cottage. But one of the things that caught my eye that started to confuse me was the fact that you have this really gorgeous, okay, big peaked ceiling in there that doesn't necessarily express country cottage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, would there be a possibility that you could express some applied beams up there? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think eventually mm. we could do that. I, that I just worry great. about the windows. Well, the okay. Here's windows. what I would say: is that the beams would held would be held off, and they would run this way. Okay. Okay. Up to the thing, or you could do a king pole and a try and trestle. Now that's going to be a lot more money. So okay. I wouldn't necessarily accept that, but you can buy applied beams that are just wood that can just go along the rhythm of this ceiling and kind of give it a little bit of a, a storyline. And then let me ask you this. Have you guys ever considered painting out this trim? Uh, we have. Uh, it kind of goes with the trim and the rest of the house. So I didn't know if I should do just one room. Uh, well, here's the deal. In this room, I, and again, this is almost more of an inner circle conversation. I would almost say in this room, regardless of what else you do in the other rest of the house, I would paint this trim because what's happening is it's actually acting as a visual break. And so all of a sudden you have one, two, three, four lines on each window. And what happens is you end up looking at this, not that gorgeous view out there. And that's really what the storyline is about there, right? With all these beautiful windows that stack yeah. like this, you have this gorgeous view and yeah. it sort of distracts. So I would completely paint these windows and these, the trim, and oh, I know you're not going to love it, but I would change this window treatment to a color that matches the wall. And then when you're ready, get these beautiful beams and have them tie into this gorgeous floor that you have, okay, uh -huh. which is super beautiful and very um, uh, 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 country cottage, okay? And then you'll actually have country cottage vibes starting to happen. And um, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, so that, uh, and I kind of, I, and what happens is all of this lines, these lines that are here, are all distracting from this yumminess, which is this gorgeous mantelpiece um, that, you know, is this big free floating piece that could really be a story. And it ties in with this. And then you could have that expression up here. Oh, honey, this would be so amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> Great I love ideas. It. I love it. All yeah. right, well, good. Here's your homework assignment, darling. Okay. Everybody in the design space gets homework. <laughs> which is I want you to take pictures of the progress when you're working at this and post these in the um, in the clubhouse section uh, under the before and afters. OK, because as you change this, here's what happens, guys. And I don't know if people really understand this about our brains, but this happens to everybody, people that are doing even just the smallest change. Our brains are meant to adapt. They are a tool that adapts like brilliantly, right? For everyone, within like 15 minutes of a change you make, your brain has already deleted that previous incarnation, 
Okay. So whatever you have happening there, if you take it out, you're doing demo on something. Every time I show somebody an inner circle, a picture of where they started, even if they're like three weeks in and all they've done is just pull some stuff out and, you know, paint one wall, they're shocked, shocked, shocked because their brain has forgotten that they had that. So one of the big um, exercises that we make people do in inner circle is you you doctor, uh, 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 what do you call it? You, you, um, you, uh, 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 you, uh, oh, I forgot the word. You, you, you actually, uh, um, take record, make records. That's what I'm trying to remember. You make record of every phase of the project because by doing that, you see not only the timeline, and to do that, you have to do, um, you have to do this thing where well, I'll show people an example real quick. Um, and then I've got to stop. Um, but uh, let me go to design space and then, okay, I'm going to share screen. Okay. So this is the home page to the design space, um, to the design space uh, uh, site, right? Which has so many wonderful things in it, like um, events and the videos and all the rest of it. But if you scroll down, this amazing thing, Design Assist, is so incredible. If you have any questions at all, guys, you need to do that. Design Planner. Oh my gosh, people are rocking this. You should see what's happening in Inner Circle with Design Planner. They're doing two and 3D renderings. It's insane. There's events and all the rest of this. But here's what I'm trying to get to. The before and afters. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a perfect example. When you stand in the same place to take your um, documenting photos of your process, and that stands for you too, Christy. Okay. You get an, you get an understanding of this is what the original building looked like. Okay. Now this happens to be a project that I did with Dana. All right. And this, I am standing in the exact same space in this picture, and this is the before, okay, replete with lovely granny's furniture, all right? That's the after. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when you stand in the same place, you get an understanding of what that looked like. Let me show you a little bit more. Um, uh, well, ooh, oh, Maggie, does this look familiar? <laughs> it does <Okay>. look familiar. <laughs> so this is what she started with. Now, granted, pretty good little bit of architecture there, okay, but a bit clumsy, let's just say. Not, not things aren't, haven't been handled in that space the way they need to be handled. And this is the after. And if any of you guys saw the process going on in the in the um, thing, this is amazing what she's done. And what you don't even see is all these shelves on the other side, this rail. I mean, ah, she's just crushed it. Here's another okay. one that is a perfect example of an inner circle member. This was the house bedroom that she bought. Woo. OK, so this is a little bit like, wow, OK. Um, needs a little TLC and definitely needs to be brought into her style. There's the after. Same exact spot, same exact room, just completely revamped through the Inner Circle program and, and her work. So, and she did all the work, guys. That's the thing. In Inner Circle, I'm not doing your work. You're doing your project. That's the thing. You're doing your project. But when you're in design space or you're in inner circle, you're just getting answers to those questions you're not sure about, right? Oh, here's a lovely one. I love this one. Now, this gal um, owns a number of Airbnbs. And this was a room that she had not touched because it had some <clears throat> uh, um, uh, familial stuff going on with it. But she was renting it out and, you know, she wanted to be able to make it a little bit better. So in a fortnight, okay, guys, this woman is a pro. She knows what she's doing. When I told her to do what she needed to do with this room, she made that happen in two weeks or under because she had to rent it out. She had a deadline for it, right? So she painted, she changed all the window treatments. She completely changed up everything in the room. And this is only one view. This is amazing. 
She got, she managed to find exactly the carpets, the exact prints that I told her to find, the chair. Um, she hadn't gotten the, the slip cover finished for the chair by the time this photograph was taken, but it was totally, totally different. So that was old juju. We had to repaint it because it was a weird velv uh, violet that mm -hmm. someone else had requested. And after, what a fresh, refreshing room. I would stay in that room in a heartbeat. Yeah. So, and so well, here's another yeah, I just, one. I just want to say, I just want to say, um, okay, so we're a little bit past time. And I want to say thank oh, you to, to Christy for, for joining us, who's still hanging out in our, <laughs> in our chat. Thank, thank you for your very much. I so appreciate it. Um, thank you so much, Christy. And we are going to be watching for that. Okay. That transition yes, for sure. So you can see how amazing, like, I mean, I mean, how inspiring are, are these before and afters? I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, obviously this, this is the inner circle is and this is, this is like Lisa Holt coaching. Okay. <laughs> um, but still, I mean, this is what can happen. And so if you are, are interested or have questions about the inner circle, please send us an email um, to hello at Lisa Holt.com. Um, yes. And we'll get some info out to you um immediately because again these spots fill up really really quick so if you're interested do not hesitate and even if, even if you think oh is my project big enough is it is it too small or whatever reach out to us anyway and we will we'll chat with you and make sure you're a good fit um yes, so yeah yes. yeah we don't take anybody who isn't a good fit guys if if it's not a good fit join design space because that can yeah. really be some solutions that can get you there um but yeah you know come 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 join us we're we yeah we we have a lot of fun over here i have to say yes. oh for <laughs> sure for sure and for those of you uh we uh, we we are out of time so we can't do the lightning round but the good news is is next week we actually have another uh live q a on thursday uh, oh, do when, really? oh good yeah we do because so, I have so three if you guys, more. Please, yeah, please submit uh, your questions to asklisa at the design club .com. Um, And if like, yeah, you guys that were in the, the lightning round Q&A, just copy paste your questions. Um, yes. and we'll get to them uh, again next Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. And thank you and so much for joining us. Submitted anything like Elizabeth and um, oh, my gosh, there were like three more people. Elizabeth. And Colleen, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. There were more. There were more, um, Sonia, uh, uh, Dee Dee. Oh, there were like three more people. Just hang in there. I'm going to get to you. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Great. Well, can we get some love for Lisa? I mean, she, she, uh, we put her to work today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and she worked it, which is great. Oh, look at all the hearts. Lisa. Oh, we're getting lots of love. Guys. Lots of love. Oh, thank I you guys you. so much. Guys, it's, it, doesn't it make our day when we know we're going to do this? Right? Yeah, it really does. It's yeah, like, absolutely. We love it. And we love awesome. having you guys on YouTube join us today. That yes. was fantastic yes. too. Very fun. Very um, interesting. Be sure everybody to go watch the videos that I told you guys about. Our algorithm needs a little love. Yeah. So please yeah, like the video, um, comment, comment, like, on it. Yeah. share. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Share, so. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for joining us and we will see you next time. Yes. Okay. Very